Hello viewers, Guy with the Camera 23 and welcome to part 6 of 2014, A Kubrick Odyssey. Now I do apologise for the lateness of this video, it's been a, uh, nearly, a think, nearly a week since I did my last one in this series and I apologise for that, it's just kind of other things took priority and in this part I'm going to be talking about Kubrick's 1957 anti-war film, Pass of Glory. Now unfortunately the only way I'm going to be able to watch this is with a DVD. Yes, we are going back to the Dark Ages, ladies and, ge ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's a DVD, it's part of a box set of two films of, I've already got on uh, Blu-ray now. And uh, yeah, only way to watch this. I did want to get, I do want to get my hands on the Criterion, but I just um, didn't have chance for this series, so it's going to have to be just DVD for now. And uh, so yeah, next up will be Pass of Glory. So directed by and screenplay co-written by Kubrick, it stars Kirk Douglas as the leader of a group of soldiers in the First World War and a, uh, a, an order is passed down to him, to his men, to take uh, the Ant Hill and uh, it's, it's clearly a suicide mission, there's no way anything, there's no way that, that soldiers aren't going to die, it, they blatantly even say that. Uh, the general who kind of uh, take, uh, takes the order kind of explains how how many uh, how many men will be lost uh, ultimately to get to the kind of the you know, the ultimate goal. But yeah, it's clearly a suicide mission. They um, try to do what is asked of them, which is kind of what they legally need to do. Uh, and they lose a lot of men, and they end up retreating. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of soldiers in the kind of the other trenches will not um, will not kind of go into no man's land because there's like because they know that. It's not going to end well, you know. There's shells going off all the time. Lots of kind of war going on around them, and they just won't go on the go from the trenches, and and the general um, uh, court martials three. Actually, he originally wants to court martial a hundred of them, but they agree on um, uh, three people, one from each battalion, and uh, they are court martialed and sentenced to death. And uh, the the I mean the the court. The court case is a complete sham. It's kind of totally one-sided. There's no way they're going to win, and they eventually get um, uh, shot by super, uh, suicide squad, <laughs> uh, shooting squad. I mean, uh, firing squad, even sorry. And uh, so yeah, that's the basic story. Uh, very, very well shot as always. It's distinctly Kubrick. Uh, throughout the war scenes, there's kind of like really like a really, really nice lot, a uh, lot of long takes, but it's a really kind of standout one. Where Kirk Douglas is just uh, kind of kind of walking in the trenches, kind of just before they're about to go over the go over the top and uh, kind of do this uh, this mission, and it's just here. It's just like one long shot of just him kind of like walking through the trenches. Really, really powerful stuff. A lot of long, lot of long. Uh, I've noticed a kind of in the kind of the war scenes, a lot of uh, long takes, and in the rest of the film, the court cases and things, there are uh, lots more. Uh, there are long shots, but there's more kind of quick, quick editing, quick cuts, and uh, so yeah, it really um, kind of builds to the, the powerfulness of the film. I think that's a word, anyway, uh, <laughs> um, of kind of the war of the uh, war scenes. A lot of kind of uh, kind of extreme close-ups, uh, autofocus shots, and things like that. So it's distinctly Kubrick again. Another one of the films that even if you didn't know it was directed by him, like from the first like five minutes, you know, yeah, that's a Kubrick film, definitely. Uh, Really cool story um, about the film, though. The uh, I don't know the exact specifics. They were doing this scene, and uh, so I've got some notes here. Just the actor's name, um, Adolf Menjou. Uh, he, he was doing a scene. He didn't say which scene, and basically he uh, the it it kind of uh, highlights um, Kubrick's, I guess, um, kind of desire to get the best out of his films and uh, to have complete control over his films as well. And basically, they kind of did a scene, think about seventeen takes, and um, kind of it was like it was obviously kind of really like past the lunch break, and uh, Kubrick wanted wanted him to do one more, and basically he, uh, the actor Adolf is Ed, Adolf, uh, sorry, yeah, Adolf A, I don't know, uh, Menju kind of went on this tirade about his uh, his parenting, his lineage, about Kubrick's lineage, and. Uh, Basically, writing and raving about how he he doesn't know how to direct actors. Uh, he's not particularly good. Uh, he's not kind of a welcoming a welcoming presence to the film. And then he was like, went into this massive tirade, and uh, Kubrick just kind of stood there nonchalantly and just said, "Let's do one more one more take." And uh, the kind of he just he just did it, 
I mean, that is that is a powerful that, that is a powerful man, you know, to just kind of stand there while he takes all this abuse from this actor. Uh, it's basically saying that like he's basically saying he's no good, and uh, at least directing uh, directing actors, and to just stand there and just kind of take it and just say, let's do another take. It must. If I mean that set the. And the tension on that set must have been palpable, and it's the same in, in the film as well. You know, it's very, it's very tense. Uh, you don't kind of know what's going to happen. Uh, it's a lot of kind of, uh, oh, maybe not backstabbing, but a lot of um, orders that aren't. I don't know that aren't really uh, the best way to do things, but because they're kind of between a rock and a hard place, they have to do them. A lot of kind of backhanded comments. Kirk Douglas gives an amazing performance, especially at the end, near the end of the film, and um, when he's talking to, oh, sorry, I can't remember his name. God, I watched about half an hour ago. Uh, but um, but yeah, very good film. A uh, lot of good acting. Uh, features um, the guy who played um, the bartender. Uh, oh, I've forgotten his name um, from The Shining. Um, Oh, this is annoying me, um, and probably you as well. Um, Lloyd, that's the one. The, bar, uh, the Lloyd, the bartender from The Shining, and uh, also uh, one of the actors from uh, uh, The Killing was in this as well. So a lot of good performances. Uh, it's I'd say it's distinctly Kubrick. It's it's really hard. It's really quite hard to watch in some places. Just the, the kind of the emotions that these men must go through, and the kind of the things that that happened that kind of lead to this conclusion it's like there's a scene where um, they're all in the prison and basically one guy punches another guy and he kind of get the uh, bashes his head on the wall and gets a fractured skull but because they need they need to be shot by the firing squad they kind of they well, they tie him to a stretcher and then tie him to this post I mean he's basically dead anyway but they still have to kind of make sure he's dead I mean that kind of stuff is really it's really hard hitting, you know, and that comes back to the performances again. Uh, I can't remember his name, but the guy who was in uh, the killing as well gives a really good performance, especially near the end. And uh, it must—it must have been absolutely murder what these men, what these men must have gone through. It's, it's really hard hitting stuff, like I said, really, really good, and uh, a very much uh, worthy um, addition to the Kubrick canon. And uh, also, of course. Um, the film that he uh, met the one true love of his life, uh, Christiane, who uh, played the uh, the woman, the woman at the end, um, kind of was singing to these German soldiers. And that's, that's another great scene as well. Just this this, this young woman is kind of uh, who is just 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 singing this. Um, I think it's kind of a, a German. Uh, they're just kind of a German song, and these men just kind of like just actually transfixed. It's just really, really nice scene, kind of um, in in a, in amongst the chaos, if you like. And uh, so yeah, they obviously uh, fell in love, uh, had kids, and uh, they stayed married till his death in 1999. So uh, yeah, so that's nice. And uh, yeah, I think that'll about do for Pass of Glory from 1957. Uh, very solid film very much worth checking out. I remember I saw it on TV kind of a couple of years ago and that was before I was kind of really into Kubrick and I even enjoyed it then so uh, yeah decent film and that'll do for this video and thanks for watching part six of 2014 A Kubrick Odyssey. <laughs>